In 1998, 3DFX had their second attempt at putting out an all-in-one video card, a product that combined 2D output paired with their groundbreaking pant-wetting 3D chip in one delightful slice of electronics. They needed to wipe away the sour taste left by their somewhat underwhelming and unloved initial attempt, the Voodoo Rush, but at the same time not create something too powerful and therefore avoiding any cannibalization of sales from the Voodoo 2, their existing high-end card of choice for the discerning gamer. The new proposition, the fantastically monikered Voodoo Banshee, was thus unleashed unto the market, and so in this video let's take a brief look at the life and times of 3 3DFX's less popular, yet still quite intriguing 16MB Glide API compatible but not particularly outstandingly brilliant graphics card. Welcome to Bite Size Thoughts, my little channel where I deal you a piping hot slice of 90s PC nostalgia with a smattering of retro console content. Subscribe if you also love this era and want to watch more little vids like this. The Voodoo Banshee was launched in September 1998, six or seven months after the Voodoo 2 was released. It was straight up against the Reva TNT and Matrox G200 at the time. In terms of technical specifications, it had 16 megabytes EDO DRAM clocks at 100 megahertz. It could run a max 2D res of 1920 by 1440 with 16.7 million colors. It also supported the main emerging 3D standards, Direct3D, OpenGL, and of course most importantly Glide, as it used the same 3D chip that was in the Voodoo 2. 3DFX had put in a whole lot of development time to really ensure that the 2D performance of the card was up to scratch. Previously with the Voodoo Rush, they had outsourced the 2D capability to two separate chip manufacturers, Alliance Semiconductor and Macronix. Many gamers who plumped for the Rush had noticed that the 2D side of the proposition was fairly underwhelming, and in most cases the card in general was seen as a bit of a gross mistake, as it performed worse than the original standalone Voodoo 1 card. But having 2D capability and 3D acceleration in one card was where the market was going. Cheaper for consumers and good for OEMs as they could save both money on components as well as space and slots on the motherboards with less expansion cards. One of the downsides to the Voodoo 2 that they wanted to fix was that the pass-through cable could introduce video quality degradation. Having a single card and a single video output removed that issue altogether. 3DFX were also pushing that the 2D graphics in this card were now lightning fast to match their fearsome 3D reputation. But remember, in 1998, Glide was still king of the hill for rendering 3D graphics, and the Voodoo 2 was the high-end product showcasing the beauty that could be witnessed, the card being the gold standard for 3DFX and their most ambitious and deep-pocketed of PC Master Race enthusiasts. These hardware nutters were going balls deep on dual Voodoo 2s in the world's first SLI configuration, combining two 8 meg or 12 meg cards together to get totally insane performance and ridiculously high resolutions in 3D games that were previously only imagined in their wettest of wet dreams. So the Banshee was released with certain limitations so as not to directly compete. Most notably, it used only a single Texel management unit, as opposed to the Voodoo 2 which used two. It did have a slightly higher clock frequency on that pipeline to compensate, and so this meant that in some games the Voodoo Banshee could either match or have slightly better performance of the Voodoo 2, whilst in others the Voodoo 2 would pull ahead. However, almost uniformly, two Voodoo 2s in concert would perform much better. Most gamers in the middle of 1998, if they had the budget, would still go for the Voodoo 2, if they already had a 2D card in their system, or just wait another 6 months or so, as the graphics card market was extraordinarily volatile back then. But, if money was a bit tight, and you really wanted client compatibility above all else, 
then the Banshee would be a decent choice. And with previous models, 3DFX licensed the chipset to other manufacturers to produce their own cards. I was lucky to pick up a Gigabyte 603 before prices quadrupled this year, which supposedly is the fastest clock Banshee at 110 megahertz. Paired with my P3 500 and 128 megabytes of RAM, it makes for quite a nice little glide machine. Now, within only a short few months, 3DFX unveiled the upcoming Voodoo 3 in November 1998, with a second quarter 1999 release date. They were already under heavy pressure from Nvidia. Media. The Voodoo 3 looks to have had many, many similarities to the Banshee. They removed the single pipeline limitations such that, when released, the Voodoo 3 was on track to easily surpass the SLI config of the Voodoo 2, whilst also continuing to incorporate 2D and 3D together on the single card. Looking back, it does seem like the Banshee was 3DFX's evolutionary step that bridges between their initial business model of developing 3D graphic accelerators to moving into all-in-one video cards designed, developed, and manufactured in-house. 3DFX had bought STB systems by then and no longer licensed their chips out to other manufacturers like Creative, Diamond Melt Media, and others. I couldn't find too much during my research on when the Banshee ceased production or when it was last sold, but I imagine it was superseded by the Voodoo 3s and outclassed by Nvidia's TNT2 fairly quickly and that most OEMs would have moved on rapidly to follow suit. Even so, I still quite like my Banshee card and I'm very happy to have one in my collection. Hope you all enjoyed that quick look back at this particular model of the 3DFX family. Pop in any questions you have below and I will do my best to answer them. See you in the next one, my friends.